How many people have heard me speak before recently? First three slides will be about the same. I haven't changed since Monday as far as I know. Um, my name is Bill Cotter. I work for a company called 3M. And of course, since they paid for me to come in down here, I'm going to uh, cover a little bit about you know, the company. Basically, it's a big company. It's a little different than you know, some of the previous speakers. Uh, because uh, we build so many different products, and we're about 228 different manufacturing facilities around the world. No two of them are the same. So we deal with a lot of variety, and as at the bottom says, we have about over 55,000 products. And these products are very diverse. Things like uh, fillings for your teeth or temporary crowns, stethoscopes, um, data systems, of course, scotch tape and all the other things that you know. Um, it really keeps us on our toes. Um, one of the things I'm very envious of the previous speaker is talked about redundancy. Um, you don't want to pay 20 bucks for a stack of uh, post-its. I don't think you pay 20 bucks yet, anyway. Um, so, you know, we, we don't build a lot of redundancy into our systems. So we have to have reliable systems and uh, get into that. I guess, oh, I just want to show you where I exist in the organization. We have a number of different businesses, all reporting to our CEO. And then, of course, we have a staff because we're a big corporation. And if you look at the very bottom, I down there at the bottom, the capital engineering group, you know, we put in the new stuff. When it gets dirty, I go home. I don't like to get my hands dirty. Um, so this just talks about the, the variety of products. And just you have to consider that you know, what we're dealing with is the, is the different things that we're doing. And uh, so we need, uh, oh, yeah, why do you, so a big, I work for a big corporation. Why do you care about me? I'm special. Um, I've been around a long time. I got a great title. Um, been a, you know, I'm a rocket scientist. I also worked as a mechanical engineer. I um, was in maintenance, so I did get my hands dirty. And I realized how much I didn't like it. Um, I also worked in, uh, you know, FDA regulated plant, and uh, and now I've been at 3M for 31 years. It just seems to have flown by. But I'm also interested in standards. Anybody remember MS Mug? We were de dealing a lot with uh, with trying to, you know keep Microsoft in shape and understand what our issues were on the, on the factory floor. And now, rolling from that, I am now in ISA 99. And plug, 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 there is an ISA 99 meeting this afternoon up on the second floor at the Walu Room, starting around 12.30. So after you grab your box lunch, please come up and join us and uh, get involved in uh, security. It's so much fun um, dealing with, uh, with standards. And speaking of that, um, I wanted to get back to what I was really supposed to be speaking out is, you know, transforming industrial automation and beyond through the power of collaboration of industry standards. And I am the first person to tell you I hate working on standards. I think they're a pain in the neck. And uh, this brings me back to one of my favorite standards, which is one of the worst of all time, because it really didn't deal with all the things we needed to deal with. And it left you hanging. And I don't know. I just grabbed this picture off of Google, and you know, it just reminds me of the pain we used to go through all the time with RS-232, which was the best in the world that we had, right? So we know that even a bad standard can be good and get the job done. And another bad standard I like to pick on the guys who asked me to speak is OPC uh, DA using DCOM, which is one of those things you know we fought constantly on how to set things up in the domain, with which groups, you know, just what the heck, give everybody an uh, administrator and you're okay. That really secures your, your networks when you set those up. Um, of course, then you always have to worry about which machine starts first when there's, a, when there's a glitch, and then, you know, how you're doing it, and then which versions you're using. So you're fighting all the time, even though it's a standard. What could go wrong? So. That gets me to the, you know, what I really want to get into, and certification. It, I don't have the ability to, you know, to have, build a lot of redundancy and everything else. I need stuff to work. So I want to be bored. I really want to go home at night and just, you know, play free cell, talk to my kids, and remember who I am, you know, and walk the dog. But so I want things to work. And you got to remember, it is about me, the end user. We're the people who buy the stuff, make it go. We need to have our stuff running. So if we don't buy your, we can't keep running. We can't buy your stuff. We're in trouble. So 
We don't live in a homogeneous world. Yes, I would love to buy from all one vendor and you know, they'll take care of me and everything will be sweet. Um, doesn't happen in my world with 228 plants. You know, some we bought, some we built, some uh, we got some independent thinkers out there who want to slam something together. So we need stuff to work together. So again, we'll get to that you know, certification. Um, so, you know, if you don't have things checked out in advance, they're going to break on you. We're going to have to do it. So, again, we need to work together early in the game, not wait till things are just, you know, smoking in the field. Um, and uh, certification is the best process we have for checking the standard out to see if it's any good, make sure things are working. And again, as I'll say once and for, you know, all the time, I hate standards. They're a pain in the neck to work on, but I'm not really sure what else we can do. And that's why I say go back to three. You know, we don't live in the homogeneous world. We've got to make things work together. So this, I guess you're not supposed to bring up politics during, but I just love this quote because you can take out the word democracy and insert anything you want in there for the, you know, a lot of this stuff. But you know, basically, it's not perfect, it's not great, but it is the best form, you know, of whatever we have um, to make things go. And that's from Winston Churchill a few weeks back, I think. So, this is the way I feel about it, you know, the bottom line. You can't do without certification. You've got to check things out and make sure they're working. Um, and you've got to have a standard to check against. You can't check against anything arbitrary. So, got to have sort of, so get into this. No, okay. Just tell you now, at this point, you can start using these slides when you get the slide deck for your trip report, you know, to be a little more official and, and, and drier. Um, basically, you know, uh, end users who are smart ask for certification and push for it. Now, of course, we don't want to pay for it, and, uh, you know, but we do like to see it on our packages and know that things have been tested because we want them to work. So ensures they're compliant. And again, you can take out the OPC and insert well, you know, your favorite topic in there. I'd say security or something else. But, um, but for today, we'll, OPC, it's important to have OPC work, OPC UA work in, in a consistent manner. And uh, so again, work should make sure the products are interoperable and uh, make sure they're robust and don't crash, because that's one of the things you want to make sure that they're, they're very stable. And the best practices, you can, by dealing with the standards, dealing with the certification, you can learn from others. You don't have to go it alone. And there is some power in that, especially when you don't have a huge staff or it can justify great gobs of money to do something. You can really get some help by working with others. And then um, it establishes the credibility so that you know you can safely put it in and know what's going on. Oh, no automation. Um, so basically, you know, functional testing. What's covered in during the certification process from OPC? This is based on the OPC certification process. Is that they do do functionality testing? They do performance testing, so you get an idea of how much you can pump through. Like one of the earlier slides was pretty impressive. Um, also, the recovery from when things do go wrong you know that there's a recovery process and what it, what it takes to do it. So I think that's pretty important for us. Um, and then it, efficiency testing to make sure the system works, you know, pretty, you know, pretty well. No degradation for, as you load the thing up. And then usability testing. How do I, you know, set things up and how, do, how are things work for my users? Because I'm not always there. As I said, I like to take a weekend off every now and then. Um, and then what environment, what do you really need to make things work? So you have all those things predefined, pre-checked out, and that's uh, really nice. And then this is just a kind of a summary or say, you know, of the same sort of information. You know, Basically, the objective is to find and continually refine compliance because this stuff never stops. You never finish with a standard. You never finish with a you know, certification process. As you learn and you, you know, work with it, you always you know, get more to add. Um, and the other thing in the bottom there I think is pretty important that, you know, tools are developed for you to use to help in you and your testing and your process and your checking out. So, pretty concise and to the point, right? 
very entertaining. Everyone's still awake, checking for your air flights. So, thank you, Bill. Okay.